Hey YouTube, Brian here with another random video covering one of my many interests. Um, this time I'm talking about sim racing gear, and in particular a recent upgrade that I made from this, the Logic Track Driving Force GT steering wheel that I've had since college, originally purchased to play with Gran Turismo on the PS3, um, to this, the Fanatec CSLDD and various other Fanatec uh, gear, which I'll talk through in a moment. Um, I'm not like a serious sim racer, but I've been having a lot of fun lately playing BeamNG, Assetto Corsa, um, Dirt Rally 2, and my daughter really enjoys Forza Horizon. Um, so I've been getting a lot of playtime in with racing games of late, and decided it was time to upgrade from the, D the Driving Force GT over there, which is not a bad wheel. Uh, it's really, for what it is, uh, durable. It's lasted a long time. It's great that it still works, uh, only with the PlayStation. Uh, sorry, a PC. Um, it's not compatible, I don't believe, with any PlayStations after the PS3, unfortunately. Um, but you know, it's pretty bare bones. It's gear driven, which means it is noisy, which isn't great when I'm racing at night with my daughter trying to sleep across the hall. Um, and it doesn't have any, you know, clutch or shifter, which I really did want. I have a standard transmission car that I drive and. With the move to electric vehicles, um, I'm expecting my next car will not have such a transmission. And so I was hoping to have like a pretty realistic, fun, immersive driving experience in my, um, on my games with a good shifter and clutch pedal. And so after doing a lot of research, um, starting with the higher end Logitech options, because they do have a, a better wheel with a clutch and shifter, um, but pretty quickly ruled it out. I didn't feel like it was going to be enough of an upgrade over what I was used to. The shifter itself was kind of a toy, um, and you know they're still gear driven. So while it's probably a better gear driven wheel than this Driving Force GT, the G29, G920 um, is still a noisy gear and has the sort of notchiness and relative slowness that comes with a gear driven wheel. Um, so then I looked at the Thrustmaster options and they have some pretty compelling options. Um, they're belt driven, which is a step up, quieter, more detailed, uh, quicker uh, in the force feedback department, and they have a nicer shifter. But when I started pricing things out, I came to the conclusion that with the exception of the wheel, which admittedly is a, a significant part of the price, um, the other Thrustmaster components really weren't for that price competitive compared to the Fanatec options. So like for example, the shifter is like maybe 50 bucks less, the high up, up, upgraded um, pedals with the load cell pedal um, was not that much cheaper than the Fanatec um, equivalent. And so then you're left with the steer steering wheel, the um, force feedback wheelbase and the wheel itself, which from Fanatec. Um, Actually starts at 350 plus you can get a wheel for a little over 100 bucks, which is not that much more than you'll pay for the Thrustmaster, say T300, which does come with some pedals, but not very good ones. Um, and, but of course, when you upgrade to this wheelbase, which is called the CSLDD, um, the, the 350 option is the cheaper of the two options, and everyone sort of recommends you go with the the upgraded version, which is only different in the sense that it comes with a more powerful power supply. Um, but everyone says if you're going to buy it, you should go go for the upgraded one, which is almost $500. And that's not including the wheel. This wheel right here is a um, one that they sold on Black Friday. It's basically just a simpler looking rubber wrapped uh, equivalent of some other wheels that they do sell regularly, uh, which is pretty entry level for them. I think this was like 120, uh, maybe 130. Um, so that combined with the wheelbase with the 8 newton meter upgraded boost kit, which is the higher end option, um, this whole thing cost about um, 600 bucks. Um, and then you add the shifter, which I believe is 250. And then the CSL pedals, which are 80 bucks, with a $130 load cell upgrade, which basically lets you take the stock non-load cell brake and turn it into a clutch pedal, um, and then gives you you know full three pedal setup, um, nice and efficiently without having to throw anything away. So I really like that. So it is a pricey option. I think I spent almost $1,100 uh, after shipping and tax for this entire setup. And it took a very long time to come. I got it a few weeks ago um, in February, uh, sorry, March. Um, 
after ordering it at uh, on Thanksgiving weekend. So it did take a while. Um, I think the lead, lead times are better now. Uh, and it's all mounted to the uh, PlaySeat Challenge um, cockpit, which is foldable. And um, for my space, I did not, I was not ready to commit any permanent space to this hobby, so I, I was limited to the foldable cockpits. And I actually started with the um, Next Level Racing GT Lite. Um, the main reason was that I, I liked the fact that it was a little bit cheaper and it came with a shifter mount. So on paper, it was the better option compared to the play seat. But after actually sitting in it for like all of two minutes, I quickly realized this was not, it was not going to be something I was going to um, enjoy. It wasn't comfortable for me. I'm a smaller guy and um, it, I was swimming in it, so it was not like a well-fitted um, set for me. And, um, and I found that it was very cumbersome to fold, which is kind of, kind of defeats the purpose of a foldable cockpit, if you ask me. Um, so I got the Placey Challenge, and at least for my body, this thing fits me like a glove. It's re really quite comfortable, folds instantly, um, and basically I determined, too, that the shift mount that the GT Lite comes with um, wasn't placed in a way that I was going to be too happy with anyway, so I felt like I was going to end up having to DIY that regardless. And so all that, all that is to say, um, I've been very happy with the play seat challenge. I think if you are limited in space and need a foldable cockpit, this is definitely the one to go with, unless you're a larger person, in which case maybe this is going to be a little on the small side. Um, but I would still give it a shot because it really is a great, great product. Um, but you will have to DIY stuff. It doesn't have a way to hard mount um, uh, pedals out of the box, and it doesn't have a shifter mount out of the box. Um, but both are DIYable, as I will show in a moment. Um, so real quick, I'll just show the folding action here. Um, now compared to the Dragonforce GT, which I had mounted this initially, um, folding all this business is quite a bit more um, laborious just because this stuff is much heavier weight. It's like all solid metal, um, but it still folds. And I will um, pause the camera and show you that in a moment. All right, so fold this up. Um, usually lift this part up and then I kind of squeeze this over. And then um, I think it's possible, there we go, to get that up under there. And then I have this strap that the Placey Challenge came with, which I like to wrap around here and just kind of press on there. And there it is. Um, so it folds up almost as securely as, as with any other um, stuff, you know, set of stuff on it. Um, it is a little bit top heavy. Um, <laughs> And so it won't take much to tip this over, especially with the shifter adding weight on the side, so that is something to be aware of. But um, it does work. It doesn't take long to fold. And um, yeah, if you're limited in space and you need a foldable cockpit, even if you're going with this higher end stuff from Fanatec, I would say definitely, um, definitely give the, <laughs> definitely give the Placey Challenge a look. It is um, not a bad option. And uh, again, it takes a little doing to fold and unfold, but it's ultimately quite quick once you get the hang of it. Um, so. All right, so with that out of the way, let's talk a bit about more of this hardware and what it's like to drive and why I think it is worth the, the money if you're willing to get into this hobby in a pretty serious way. And I would say this is probably the most um, powerful stuff you want to put on the play seat challenge but it definitely works. I've not had any concerns really with rigidity. There are some ways you can upgrade it if that is a concern, but um, frankly, I'm not, I don't have any complaints so far. Um, so the, um, the CSLDD, let's just talk about this a little bit for a moment, um, was really a big deal when it came out last year. So this is a direct drive wheelbase, and this is the cheapest, uh, most entry-level direct drive wheelbase you can buy right now. Uh, Logitech has been hinting that they're coming out with one of their own. But as of now, this one from Fanatec is the way to go if you're going direct, if you want to really get kind of the highest end experience without breaking the bank. Um, so direct drive wheelbases, in case you're not familiar, um, as the name implies, are just a motor directly attached to your wheel. And so that makes them completely silent um, uh, and very immediate and um, smooth in how they deliver the force feedback. So unlike... Um, the fan, sorry, the uh, 
Logitech or Thrustmaster options, which are gear or belt driven, there's no linkage in between the motor and the wheel. And so it's just very immediate and quiet. Um, it's also quite strong. Um, this one is boosted with the 8 Newton meter boost kit, which provides extra power compared to the stock option. Um, and it's as powerful basically as the higher end belt driven wheels, but again, with the silence and the smoothness of a direct drive wheel. Um, it also is able to deliver a lot more detail because there's no um, sort of sloppiness in the connection between the motor and the wheel. And so it just provides you with a much higher quality of fe force feedback. And again, for the price, um, again, you can get it for $350 with, that, with the lower power, power supply. Um, but even if you go all the way up to the, the higher end option with the 8 Nm power supply, it's less than $500 bucks for the wheelbase, which is really um, something like less than half, I think the next wheel, uh, direct drive wheelbase that's available on the market. So they really did come out with a very price competitive option. And while more expensive than say the T300 from Thrustmaster, um, it's sort of the next you know, major step up in terms of force feedback quality. So definitely interest, uh, worth kind of considering if, if um, you can afford it. And then the other options in the Fanatec op, uh, lineup which can be purchased independently, so you could mix and match um, lines here. But if you go with all Fanatec stuff, everything plugs in really nicely um, into the wheelbase itself, and so you only have one USB cable having to connect everything to your computer, which is really nice. Um, and it just kind of you know completes the set, goes well together. Um, so let's talk about the pedals next. So the pedals, um, initially when you buy the CSL pedals, it's 80 bucks, and it comes with the gas pedal here and then this um, uh, potentiometer-based, um, or maybe hall sensor-based um, brake pedal, which is basically measuring uh, braking power by the position of the brake pedal. Um, but for 130 something or do uh, dollars, you can buy the load cell upgrade kit. And that um, basically gives you a different brake pedal, which um, measures force by um, the pressure that you, your, your foot is applying as opposed to the distance of the travel. And so this gives you a more uh, realistic kind of brake feeling um, as well as a more precise way to apply braking force. And so I'm not like a serious racer so I couldn't tell you that I'm like that much better or anything with the load cell but um, considering you need to buy something to turn this um, CSL pedal set into a full uh, set with a clutch, I feel much better by paying some money to get an upgraded braking experience versus buying just the clutch standalone and then having kind of the basic brake. So I think that's the way to go even if you aren't necessarily someone who's going to completely appreciate the, the benefits of a load cell. It does get, take getting used to. The, that was the thing that I had the hardest time with after I started racing all of this compared to my Logitech. The, the braking feel is just totally different with a load cell. Um, but once you get the hang of it, it really does um, feel nice and natural. And um, you know the serious racers will tell you you have much better um, braking control and it's, it's a good way to go. And then finally, the, um, the shifter, which is not actually part of their CSL line, but it's the entry level, or I guess the only shifter that Fanatec sells. Um, this thing is awesome. It really feels very convincing, um, very solid, um, and the throws are similar, I would say, to um, what I'm used to in my little Suzuki. Um, and so I really enjoy the shifter as well. So all in all, I've been extremely happy with this. It's a huge step up over the, the set I was using, um, and it's just, it's just been a lot of fun um, to play around in Beam and G and uh, uh, have the full kind of clutch and shifter experience. Um, very cool. So the last thing I'll talk about real quick is just how I mounted this stuff to the Placey Challenge because again, um, with the exception of the, the wheelbase uh, plate here, there isn't anything <clears throat> that the, uh, any like stock way to mount this stuff properly. So I'll start with the wheelbase just real quick just to give you a sh uh, show you how I have that mounted. Again, I didn't have to do anything custom, um, but it's basically attached with three of the little slider things that it comes with, the wheelbase comes with. Um, and I did have to use some shorter uh, screws that I just happened to have um, to attach it properly. So the ones that came with my Play Seat Challenge, sorry about that, 
um, were too long. Um, so that's just something to be in, keep in mind. You might have to find some shorter ones. Um, I just happen to have those lying around. Um, and yeah, I have it mounted kind of to the far end of the plate because you know all this connection stuff takes up quite a bit of space. Depending on the wheel you get, um, you know the spacing might be a little different, but basically that's how I found it to be comfortable. The um, let's go down to the shifter next. So this one is the most interesting, and I'll put a link into the, the description to the video that I found that this is kind of inspired by. But basically, these are some cheap um, GoPro mounting clips that I um, basically put a bolt through. Uh, and then have some little PVC spacers. You could come up with different ways to kind of create some space here. Basically, you don't want this tight or uh, flush necessarily because of this business, but um, I suppose you could get away with maybe not being quite so far. Um, and then I have this uh, RAM mount down here that I have mounted to um, one of the sliding nuts um, that comes with the shifter, um, and that's providing um, this kind of uh, security here. It's quite wobbly without this, so I do consider this to be kind of a must. Um, and so it's basically mounted in three places that way. And in terms of positioning, there's really not any other places you could mount this thing. Um, so fortunately this just happens, in my opinion, to be a very comfortable uh, position for the shifter. So very happy with how that turned out. Very natural feeling and secure. And then finally we'll look at the um, pedal plate and how this is mounted. So there's various ways you could do this. I happen to have these um, steel, um, you can see this long piece of steel um, just lying around. It just happened to be the right uh, length, so that worked out really well. I had to put some extra holes in it to line up, um, but basically I have each of the pedals screwed in or bolted in with some bolts I had. Um, and then I have these um, pipe fastener strap things, um, kind of holding it to the, um, the pedal uh, base itself. And then I have these big zip ties kind of just keeping it from sliding down. Um, and so all that together uh, makes this very secure. It doesn't really move around when I'm braking hard or anything. And then down below I have the same, the same deal mounting it. Um, so you'll probably figure out some slightly different way to do this, but um, ultimately I just didn't want to have to take the foam off or cut it or anything, and I also wanted something that wasn't going to scratch whatever this is resting on. That's why I went with the plastic straps. And this has worked out really well. Um, so, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, again, would highly recommend this if you're looking to get into this hobby in a serious way, um, but need to be able to fold away your setup when you're not using it or when you're taking a break. Um, the Fanatec stuff definitely works on here. Um, the only thing I would say that um, is probably too strong um, or could be too strong for this is the load cell pedal. Um, depending on how you have it calibrated or set up in the driver, um, it could require so much force to get to 100% that you're going to end up folding um, or basically uh, having the whole thing kind of do this business. Um, and so what you're basically going to have to do is you're just going to have to set the maximum uh, pressure on the brake to something less than 100%. Um, I think I have mine set to something like 60% or so, um, and I'm able to get to 100% without getting that folding action. So it's totally doable, um, but just keep in mind you're, you are going to have to kind of calibrate that um, a little bit. Um, and, you know, yeah, there is a little bit of flex and wobble um, when you're really turning hard and stuff, um, but so far I haven't even felt like I need to install any sort of um, um, straps or anything here. There are some aftermarket things that will kind of cut down on this um, flex here, um, but I don't really even notice it when I'm driving. Um, and uh, yeah, basically I would say if you're coming from any gear driven wheel setup, this is going to be a huge step um, above what you're used to. If you're coming from the belt driven um, wheel, I can't speak you know, to what that's going to be like, but I can just say that this is a very serious um, and immersive and enjoyable um, sim racing setup. And if you're looking to spend $1,500, including the, the cockpit, um, this is definitely how I would spend it. Um, if you're looking to spend quite a bit less than that, I think you know Logitech is probably a good option. Um, and frankly, I just feel like the Thrustmaster, although it does occupy kind of that middle price point, 
Um, by the time you're spending all money on the Thrustmaster setup, I would just strongly encourage you to consider whether you can hold out a little longer maybe and, and go all the way to the Fanatec um, ecosystem because every one of these components is a substantial step above uh, the Thrustmaster, I think. Um, the pedal is a more serious load cell pedal, even though Thrustmaster does have one of those. The H-pattern shifter, um, very solid feeling, very real feeling. Um, also has a nice feature. I don't do sequential shifting much, but you can switch to sequential mode just by doing that. And now it's a sequential shifter. Um, which is super cool. Uh, the Thrustmaster, although it technically can be used sequentially, um, requires like a whole bunch of, like you have to unscrew something to, to switch it, which is really annoying. Um, and then of course the direct drive wheelbase versus a belt driven wheelbase. Um, again, I don't have experience comparing those two, but I can speak to the quietness, the smoothness, the strength, um, and the detail that this thing provides, and it's all all really, really great. So I hope this video is interesting. If you're in the, um, interested in any of this, um, <laughs> feel free to give it a thumbs up, and thanks for watching.